Hi readers, it's Lori. Welcome back to my channel, Books, Ink, and Paper. Welcome for the first time. If you're just now finding me, I'm happy that you're here and I hope that you will stick around and hopefully subscribe and watch more of my videos as time goes on. So we are gearing up toward the wedding and I am filming this a little bit early in anticipation of the fact that I will be out for a few days with that lovely experience that we're all looking so forward to. I can't even tell you, but um, I mean, I guess some of you know, because you've been involved in this kind of thing before, but yeah, we're so, so, so excited about this wedding and all of the activities that are still to come before it actually happens. I decided it's time to cut off my book purchasing. <laughs> Although I pre-ordered a book today it likely won't be here until my uh, April haul. And I am just excited to talk to you about the books that I acquired in the month of March. There are a few of them for sure. I may need to take a look at my book buying habits. Um, and yet, I mean, they're just books that I really felt like I was led to purchase for a number of reasons that I will try to justify, I'm sure, as I go forward with this video. The one I purchased on my Libro.fm account that supports my local bookseller, Southern Bound Bookshop, was How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. I wasn't planning on purchasing this one, but when I was doing that video that I think has already gone out, yeah, it has, about if I love this, then I'll probably love that. I got really curious about this book and I looked at some other reviews and I looked at some other things and I had some credits on Libro, so I got it. This one follows Louise, who is fairly successful, discovers that her parents have been killed in a car accident and she is going to have to settle their estate and they're going to have to go through their things and sell their house pretty quickly. Her brother, Mark, is not such a uh, successful guy. He struggles to make ends meet and to hold a job, I think. And so they come together and meet at their parents' house with the intention of preparing it for the sale. And as the synopsis says, which I think is fantastic, some houses don't want to be sold and their home has other plans for them. And I just think that the more I thought about this as I was filming that video and the more I thought about it after, I wasn't sure if it was something I wanted to own. But then again, I had these credits, so I went ahead and got it. And I think it'll be great. I hope so anyway. Let's talk about what I got on Book Outlet this month. I haven't purchased anything on Book Outlet for a long time. And then here's what happened. <laughs> I did the Mardi Gras readathon in February. And I was talking about books that fulfilled one of those prompts, which was to read a book that takes place in one day. And it reminded me to talk about Mrs. Dalloway and the hours. So I purchased Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf and The Hours by Michael Cunningham. I have read neither one of these. I would like to tell you that this is a happy book, but it's not. And I think that's probably the reason I've shied away from it. But this book follows Mrs. Dalloway and she is preparing for a dinner party and she has her own stuff that's happening in her life. Then something tragic happens to a war veteran that is in her life and it follows the, the actions she takes and the ruminations of her day and the experience of this one particular day on Mrs. Dalloway. It is a literary classic. It is memorable. And I suspect it is also very, very challenging to read, but it is time for me to get to this. And I love this copy because it matches a copy of another Virginia Woolf that I have. The Hours by Michael Cunningham, which is a Pulitzer Prize winning novel, follows three women, Clarissa, who is planning for a dinner party, just as Mrs. Dalloway did. Laura, in the 1950s, 
the challenges of being a mom and a wife and creating the perfect home and family. And then it also follows Virginia Woolf as she is beginning to write Mrs. Dalloway and also experiencing the recuperation of her husband as they are living in London at that time. I know some people don't like this. I have a friend who read it during Mardi Gras Readathon and didn't love it. (laughs) So I get it. And yet I just felt like this was something that I want to read. It was very, very inexpensive. Book outlet had a sale. I think it would be a good kind of pairing to have both of them together on my shelves. They're both described as being brilliant. They're probably both very, very challenging, but I've been reading a lot of really challenging books lately. So, I mean, why not? I'll just kind of keep going on through. And then the other one, which actually has a permanent sticker on it that says it was a special value price is The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. I have loved this. I've read it before. This would be a reread for me should I choose to pick it up this year. But again, I'm kind of collecting some of my favorite authors and Simone St. James is a favorite author of mine. And this was her first, well, the first novel that I read of hers uh, in her body of work. This one is dual timeline. So Vermont 1950, Vermont 2014, uh, dark academia, a bunch of girls in a boarding house. I think a, a Idlewood Hall is what it's called. And it is a boarding school. One of the girls disappears. And then fast forward to the 2014 timeline where the body of Fiona Sheridan's sister is found near Idlewild Hall. And her sister's boyfriend was tried and convicted of the murder, but there is something about that that doesn't quite make sense. Fiona comes to try to discover what's happened. I remember this being creepy, just creepy enough, and I really liked it. So I thought it was time that I own it. And like I said, this is a uh, this one has a reader's guide, which I also appreciate because I didn't have that the first time. So also on sale. I picked up a copy of The Storied Life of A.J. Fickrey because while I was talking about this in anticipation of reading my five-star prediction, Tomorrow Cubed, I again said that I had not ever purchased a physical copy of this, and I began to think why. So I did purchase a physical copy of The Storied Life of A.J. Fickrey. It is paperback. Gabrielle Zevin is the author. I reread it this month. I'll tell you about my thoughts about the reread in my reading wrap up video, but I'm glad to have this on my shelves. And my next step <clears throat> is to watch the movie adaptation, which I've heard good things about from some of my readers, followers, and people that I'm connected to on various social media. I purchased <laughs> a physical copy of. The 100 Years of Lenny and Margot by Marianne Cronin. I picked this as one of my five star five star predictions. If you haven't seen that video, I encourage you to go look. So Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand, Lindsay from Lindsay's Little Library, and myself are participating in this round of five star predictions. They do a round all year long. I'm their guest in this particular round. And some of you have found me as a result of that. So thank you for subscribing and connecting with me in that way. But this one I wanted to have a physical copy of because I was pretty sure I was going to like it and want to keep it. Um, I have read it. I can't tell you anything about my experience until the end of the five-star prediction wrap up, but I did want a physical copy of it. And it does have deckled edges and I'm really happy about that. I love books with deckled edges. Not everybody does, but I do. Okay, this one is a total impulse buy for me. I was watching another booktuber talk about the 2022 Goodreads Choice Awards, and she was talking about, and this was an older video, clearly for me, and and not someone that I watch frequently, but she was talking about this particular book. It's young adult fantasy, which is not something I typically read. And she said she really didn't like it, but it's by an author that I really have liked a book by, and I liked the cover. And I was intrigued by the synopsis. So I went out that day and purchased Gallant by B.E. Schwab. (laughs) Really, this is kind of a cool color cover though, right? I mean, it's almost, 
like the upside down. I don't know. We'll see. I just really wanted to read it. I mean, I love B.E. Schwab's The Invisible Lives of Addie LaRue. It remains one of my top 10, top 20 books of all time. My favorite read. So this has lots of great quotes. Everything casts a shadow, even the world we live in. The shadows are not real. The dreams can never hurt you. You will be safe as long as you stay away from Gallant. So Olivia Pryor has wondered all of her life about kind of where her roots are and who created her. She's a bit adrift and she finds her mother's journal and she finds a number of entries that say that her mother was kind of unraveling and she had some kind of crazy drawings and things and she discovers this place called Gallant. And my sense is that Gallant calls her to come and her mother's journal warns her never to go. To me, that just seems like something I needed in my life. Most of the people that I follow on Goodreads really did like it. I think the booktuber who's, I'm trying to think of her name. It's something about Wren, like W-R-E-N, the bird. Anyway, she just didn't love it. And that's okay because I think I'm going to. And it does have some, it's a dual timeline. I think it follows Olivia. And then I think it follows her mom or her mom's journal anyway, but it's got some illustrations in it. B.E. Schwab is great for creating a kind of speculative world. I, I don't know that this is necessarily fantasy fiction as much as it might be speculative fiction, but it doesn't really matter to me. B.E. Schwab is a pretty prolific author. She writes a lot of different things and she's from Edinburgh, Scotland. And I like that perspective too, that comes from people who live in a different country and a different culture than we do. So I got it. It was on sale. I picked it up. Another book I got from my local bookstore is, and I started it, but I'm not sure where I'm at with this. Everyone in my family killed someone by Benjamin Stevenson. I, this was one of my most anticipated reads that came out in, I think it came out in February. It's billed as Knives Out and Clue meet Agatha Christie and the Thursday Murder Club. I have loved Knives Out and I love Clue and I love Agatha Christie. I have not read the Thursday Murder Club. This follows Ernie Cunningham, who is kind of a crime fiction bug. And he goes to a family reunion at a mountain resort and a body is found. And I've heard some different sort of synopses about this book. I don't want to know a ton about it, but I will say I started it. I got to page eight, it looks like. <laughs> page eight. And then I listened to it a little because it is available on Scribd. For those of you who know that I like Scribd. So I could do a combination of both, but I'm not quite sure yet. It's very quirky. I think it's very funny, which I like. I love that. Knives Out and Clue are both hilarious, right? Agatha Christie, not always so much, but a little tongue in cheek sometimes. But yeah, I just, I don't know. Maybe it was the mood I was in. I have been in kind of an up and down mood with the stresses and the excitement of the wedding and with some work stuff happening. But I would like to... Uh, discover that I love this because I purchased it. Yeah. So allegedly the synopsis is that everybody in his family has killed somebody. And the question is why and how, I guess. And then what happens at this resort when they all get together for this family reunion? All right. My book of the month selections for the month of March were probably not a surprise to any of you. I purchased the London Seance Society, which was also a highly anticipated release. And this is by Sarah Penner. And I have loved The Lost Apothecary. I did want, and I think I said, I wanted to read this a lot. Victorian London, two women hunting for truth and justice in the perilous art of conjuring the dead. There is a spiritualist who creates and puts on seances named Vaudeline, and she can conjure murder victims and then discover how 
those victims were actually killed, which supports the investigation. And then there's Lena, who has found or wants to find answers to her sister's death. And so she comes to Paris and she connects with Vaudeline. I hope this is good. (laughs) I've heard some mixed reviews from people who read an advanced copy, but I do love Sarah Penner and I love this cover and I feel like I would keep it forever, even if it's not good, but how can it not be good? And it's a book of the month selection and the book of the month typically makes some pretty good choices. So had to have it. And then I had an add-on, which was another anticipated read for me. The Soulmate by Sally Hepworth became available on Book of the Month. Yes, never read anything by this author. So this is a new author to me. Gabe and Pippa live in this coastal town on the cliffs, which are a kind of a popular spot for people who come to end their lives. And Pippa's husband, Gabe has a knack for talking people out of suicide. And then this woman approaches the cliff and he doesn't talk her out of her suicide. And he knew her. So then the question is, is he lying? Did he want her to jump? Like what is going on? This sounds like a great plot to me. It's a beautiful cover. I love the cliffs. I love the blue. I just love it. Let me look at the inside since I just told you I never do that. Let's look at the inside of this particular book. Maybe I should have a stack of books one day and do a whole video on looking at the jacket or the insides of without the jackets. Let's look and see what Sarah Penner's looks like. Not a surprise, I guess. Nice fall colors, though. A nice green and a nice mustard yellow. Very pretty. I like that. Matches really well with the cover. So those are my book of the month picks for the month of March. And then finally, the last two that I have to share with you are books that I didn't pay for. Went to my old library where I used to live to see my niece, which I didn't get to see. And to see what they had available. And I saw that they had some extra blind date with a book books out on the little um, area by the front door because people didn't pick them up. So I picked up one that said Hollywood starlet crazy life. And I remember thinking when I picked it up, you know, what if this might be Evelyn Hugo? That reminds me of Evelyn Hugo. I don't own Evelyn Hugo. I never bought it. I read it from the library probably this very copy. So Evelyn Hugo, Taylor Jenkins Reid. I love this book so much. I'm so happy to own this book now (laughs) as a free um, blind date with a book. I do have to remove the cover, but oh my goodness, I love this so much. So essentially this is the story of Evelyn Hugo, who has had this crazy life trajectory to becoming a starlet in Hollywood. And she is kind of an overnight immediate success. And this career that has spanned her life has created this allure for people to try to understand her. She was married a couple of times. People are curious about her life. People want to know what happened to her, how she navigated all these different circumstances. And she has never said a whole lot about herself. She keeps it all to herself. She just keeps her Hollywood persona forward facing. And then one day she contacts a writer whose name is Monique, who's really struggling to um, make ends meet as an author, as a writer And she's getting a divorce. Oh, the glare. I do need to take this off. She's getting a divorce. But Evelyn contacts her and wants her to write her story. Why? No one knows. Why is she finally talking? No one knows. But she does. And she tells her about her life trajectory, including her seven husbands. Can't recommend it enough. Do think I might reread it this year. Then I went to my little free library 
I grabbed a book that is really not something that I I had it was on my radar, but I never really said, oh, I'd really like to get that and read it. But I didn't say I wouldn't ever read it either. And it's a memoir, nonfiction, called Acid for the Children by Flea. Now, here's the problem. The problem isn't Flea, because I have no judgment about Flea. And I actually like the red hot chili peppers. And I have no, like, I just am, I'm Switzerland about Flea. I'm more intrigued by the red hot chili peppers as a whole. And I am typically a person who does not like books about people who use drugs. I just, I don't, I, I, I have a certain feeling that comes over me physically when I watch movies about people using a lot of drugs. I have a certain, I, I remember, and I, I'm going to do a video about this because I'm, I have a theme coming up about videos. So bear with me, but I have read books over time since I was a young person about people using drugs. And I have a certain something that happens within me. It's pretty deep and profound and I'm not sure why. However, it was in the little free library and here's what, here's what drew me in is the back cover, which says there once was a small blonde Australian boy. He loved his dog. Life picked him up and shook him all around, stumbling and bumbling, blindfolded and searching. He fell in love with the truly beautiful things. Sweet hearts warmed him with their love glow. Other hearts failed him. Feeling disconnected, out into the street, he ran looking for relief. In the process, he did things to dim his own heart light. Y'all, a cold darkness of fear grew within but in that scary place, music, the voice of God spoke, telling him to share her voice on this earth. He was swept up in the glory. And he wrote that. That, my friends, made all the difference. And I picked up Flea. And if I don't like it, then I will put it back in the little free library. I don't know. Let me know if you've read this. Because I don't know a lot of people that have read this. So thanks for joining me today for this book call. Thanks for being patient with this stack of books. It is quite extensive and I'm really okay with that. I, I appreciate all of you. I'd love to learn what you hauled in the month of March. And if you've read any of these, of course, always feel free to weigh in. If you'd like to do a buddy read, let me know that too. I do have a buddy read set up for March. Or no, I'm sorry, April with my friend Tammy, but, uh, I'm open to buddy reads, you know, past April as well. And if you didn't like these, let me know that too. Um, probably I'll still read them, but I am curious about that as well. And as always happy reading. Bye. 